Why does Saturn have rings? What are the different types of clouds? How does an octopus swim? Why does a tiger have stripes? How do flowers grow? Tell me why. The video encyclopedia is a reference work that's designed to show the answers to questions that young people ask. All materials used in this work are based upon the best-selling book series by Arkady Lyoko. What are insects? Insects are small, usually invertebrate animals. Their bodies are divided into three parts, and they usually have six legs. We call them bugs. There are somewhere between two and four million different kinds of insects. Scientists have no hope of ever being able to classify every single kind of insect that exists. There is no other class of animals on Earth that even comes close to having as many kinds as do insects. The only way scientists can even begin to count the insect population in one area is to count all the insects that can be found in and on a square yard of rich, moist soil. If you were to go over one acre of ground, you would see only an occasional butterfly, bumblebee, beetle, or ant. A scientist would find four million of them living in cozy comfort. The majority of them are so small that the human eye does not readily notice them. Many are microscopic. The miracle of life for an insect is that these tiny creatures have hearts, blood, and a circulatory system. These organs are perfect for each insect's way of life. Adult insects have bodies with three sections, head, thorax, and abdomen. The head has a pair of antennae in front that are feelers. The ears can be located in different places on the body, depending on the individual species. An insect has a heart, blood, and a circulatory system. The blood passes into the heart by means of holes that are equipped with valves. When the heart contracts, these holes close and the blood is driven out through the arteries. Their circulatory system is not greatly developed because they don't depend on the circulation of blood for their oxygen supply. Insects have tiny branching tubes that end in little air holes in the sides of the body. The air comes in right from the surface of the body and goes directly to the cells. These little tubes are called trachea. It's like having hundreds of windpipes in its stomach to take in air. The rate of breathing depends on the size of the creature. The smaller it is, the faster it breathes. There are many insects that are helpful and friendly to man. They eat other bugs, help flowers and plants to grow by spreading pollen and seeds. There are also some insects that may sting and bite, and there are insects that carry disease. Some insects are harmful at all times and should be avoided. Black widow spiders have a poison that causes great pain. Most insect bites and stings hurt for a time. Some people are allergic to the poison in a bee or wasp sting. Some kinds of mosquitoes carry germs that cause disease, such as yellow fever, malaria, and sleeping sickness. The germs that cause the disease are picked up by the mosquito and then passed on to another person that it bites. Flies play a part in the spread of such diseases as cholera, dysentery, hepatitis, and typhoid fever. These diseases are less apt to occur if an area is kept free of dirt and if the insects are prevented from breeding. A moth is an insect of the order Lepidoptera. The wings are covered with scales which provide the various color patterns. The antenna are of varied shapes but usually taper at the tip. Moths that fly in the daytime are brightly colored, but nocturnal moths, those that fly at night, are usually drab in color, mainly brown or tan. Moths vary in size from one eighth of an inch to the giant atlas moth which can be over 10 inches across. Most moths are attracted to light, and many of them seem dazed by it. There is a moth known as the clothes moth, and most people blame it for making holes in our clothes, furs, and rugs. The moth doesn't do this damage at all. The moth never eats. It lives only to produce its eggs and then dies. When the baby moth is in the caterpillar stage, it eats. That's when the damage is done. To protect clothes against moths, you must make sure that no eggs are laid on them. Moth balls keep moths away, but do not kill the eggs which may already be present. There are also clear wing moths which eat woody plants. There are peach, currant, and squash borers, and you can guess their favorite foods. There is a species of moth that eats grain and potatoes. 
The pink bollworm eats cotton. There are pea moths, strawberry leaf folder moths, and bud moths. The larvae of the wax moth feed on wax, even going into beehives where they cause serious damage. The Indian meal moth destroys cereals, flour, nuts, and dried fruits. There are other moths which eat tobacco, tomatoes, grapes, and apples. All of this damage is done by the moth in the caterpillar stage. Adult moths eat only nectar from flowers. By the way, caterpillars of some moths have been used as food by some Indian tribes who ate them for their protein. What are caterpillars? The young, or larvae of moths and butterflies, are called caterpillars. When a caterpillar hatches from the egg laid by the mother, it is very small. As it changes or grows, it builds a cocoon. The larva spins a cocoon with threads of sticky fluid that flows from an opening in the lower lip. This fluid hardens in the air. Some caterpillars form bags of silk that entirely enclose them. Others roll up a leaf. Many of the hairy kinds of caterpillars pad the cocoons with their own hair. All caterpillars then go through a resting stage called a pupa. This may last two weeks. It may last a whole winter. During this period, the caterpillar changes into a full-grown butterfly or moth. This entire process is called metamorphosis. In its new form, it emerges wet and shaky from the cocoon. As blood flows into the wings, the adult flutters its wings. When the wings are dry and strong, the butterfly or moth flies off to live as an adult. Butterflies and moths have keen senses of sight, smell, and taste. They taste with their mouths, but they smell with their antenna, and there are some butterflies that smell things through their feet. Tell me about the butterfly. Many butterflies have scents, which they use for two purposes. One kind of scent is used to attract the opposite sex. The other is used to drive away enemies. The scents of male butterflies comes from scales and pockets on their hind wings. The scents of many male butterflies resemble those of flowers or spices and are often pleasant to humans. Female butterflies produce their scents in special glands in their bodies. Many of these odors are disagreeable to the human nose. The taste organs of a butterfly are far more sensitive than that of humans. Their chief food is flower nectar. Butterflies are able to see colors very well. They can even see ultraviolet colors that the human eye cannot see. Some butterflies never eat once they reach the adult stage. Others have a tube instead of an insect mouth. This tube is coiled up like a watch spring. It can be thrust deep into the hearts of flowers to suck up nectar. In moths, this tube can be from 6 to 12 inches long. Some moths have saw-like teeth at the tip of the tube so they can cut through the skins of fruits in order to drink their juices. When there is a butterfly migration, thousands and even millions travel together across the sky. The best known of all migrating butterflies is the monarch. The monarch butterfly travels from all over the United States and southern Canada as soon as summer is over. Millions of these lovely creatures all head to the same mountainous valley in the pine forests of central Mexico. Scientists have studied this migration and have realized that the monarch butterfly follows the milkweed plants. That is their chief source of nourishment for their entire lives. As the new spring season approaches, the monarchs head north again, traveling in swarms that can reach 20 miles wide. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are any of the various winged insects of which the females suck blood and in some species transmit diseases. There are over 1,000 species of mosquitoes in the world and over 70 species in the United States. Because some types of mosquitoes carry disease, man has tried to get rid of them. The Anopheles mosquito carries malaria. The Aedes mosquito carries yellow fever. The female mosquito deposits its eggs on the surface of ponds, in pools, and in rain barrels, in the oases of deserts, and even in tin cans. Each female lays from 40 to 400 eggs. Within a week, small footless larvae hatch. Adult mosquitoes usually live only a few weeks. In some species, there are 12 generations of mosquitoes during one year. The beak of the female mosquito holds daggers with saw-like tips, plus a tube for injecting and a tube for sucking. 
As soon as she settles on your skin, she starts sawing. Into the tiny hole, she'll inject a chemical so that your blood will not coagulate or form a dry clot. Then she sucks up the blood she has prepared and flies off. The itching you feel is caused by the liquid she has injected. If you kill her before she can suck back that irritating liquid, your itching will be worse. While the mosquito bite is annoying to man, the mosquito's hum is equally unpleasant. The hum is a sort of mating call. The males make a deep, low hum by vibrating their wings rapidly, while the females have a much shriller hum. How many kinds of flies are there? There are 40,000 known species of flies. In North America, we have to cope with more than 7,000 species. All two-winged insects are called flies, and the scientific name for them is diptera. There is the common house fly, the green-headed horse fly with the painful bite, and the bee fly. Midges in the southern United States transfer the germ of a disease called pink eye. The tsetse fly carries the deadly germ of sleeping sickness in Africa. The robber flies of Australia prey on other flies sucking their juices. The most familiar fly of all is the house fly. What we call the feelers or antenna of the house fly are organs of smell, not of feeling. These antenna can detect odors at great distances. The mouth parts of this fly are combined into one organ. The fly is an amazing and deadly creature. It spreads more death than an invading army. It spreads diseases with its hairy feet and legs. This insect is wonderfully made. The house fly has two big brown eyes, and each eye is made up of thousands of lenses. These are called compound eyes. The fly also has three simple eyes on the top of its head. These can only be seen with a magnifying glass. The body of the house fly is divided into three parts, the head, the middle section or thorax, and the abdomen. Behind the two transparent wings are two small knobs that help the fly balance itself in flight. The thorax is striped and has three pairs of legs attached to it. The fly walks tiptoe on two claws that are attached to the under part of the foot. Sticky pads under the claws allow the fly to walk upside down on the ceiling or anywhere else. The entire life of a house fly is spent within a few hundred feet of the area where it was born. The housefly chooses moist decaying matter as a place to breed. The female lays the eggs, which are white and about 1 20th of an inch long. From each egg comes a slender worm-like maggot. This is the feeding stage or larva of the fly. After five or six days, the maggot's skin thickens and becomes brownish. This begins the pupil stage. Five or six days later, the full-grown fly bursts out of the pupil skin. The fly is then as big as it will ever be, for big flies do not grow from small flies. About 10 days later, the fly mates, and soon after the female lays her eggs. The ordinary house fly can manage to find enough food to live on almost everywhere. That is because of its tiny size and weight. A thousand adult flies weigh less than an ounce. The mouth parts of the fly are made for sucking up liquid food. What looks like the fly's tongue is really a snout, like the elephant's trunk. It has two lobes at the end, which act as funnels for drawing in its liquid food. When a fly lands on food, it spreads saliva on it, which makes it liquid. Why do flies rub their legs together? When you see a fly rubbing its legs together, it's just cleaning itself and scraping off some of the material that has gathered there. That material may be the bacteria of dreaded diseases such as typhoid fever, tuberculosis, or dysentery. Flies get such germs from garbage and sewage. A fly carries these germs around because their bodies aren't smooth. A fly's entire body, claws and feet, are covered with bristling hairs. The fly's tongue is also coated with sticky glue. Flies are among the oldest insects known. Fossil remains of flies have been found that are millions of years old. The Mediterranean fruit fly looks somewhat like a house fly with orange and black markings. The female of this fly lays her eggs in unripe fruit and vegetables. As the young are born, they eat into the pulp. In this way, whole crops are often destroyed. It's one of the most destructive pets we have. Grasshoppers. 
There are many varieties of grasshoppers. These insects all have strong jaws, three pairs of legs, and usually have two pairs of wings. The first pair of wings is leathery and straight, while the second pair is membranous and folds under the first pair. The grasshopper's ears are located on their front pair of legs. The hind pair, which is used for jumping, is usually long and well-developed. The female grasshopper has an organ for laying eggs at the tip of her abdomen. This organ is called an ovipositor. The longhorn grasshoppers, which include the green meadow grasshoppers, the noisy katydids, and the cricket-like wingless kind, have antennae which are much longer than their bodies. Only the males sing. Tell me about the locust. The shorthorn grasshoppers are what we call locusts. They sing by rubbing their hind legs across their forewings. They have their ears on their abdomens at the base of the hind legs. Although the word locust is applied to many members of the grasshopper family, it is actually part of a group of insects that belongs to the family known as Acrididae. The so-called 17-year locust is actually a Chicada. The species that produces the plague exists in two phases. These two phases are solitary and swarming. In the solitary phase, they live alone. They do not congregate and are sluggish in behavior. Their color matches that of their surroundings. In the swarming stage, they live in large groups. Their color is black and yellow. At this time, they're very active and nervous. When crowding is forced on the locusts in the solitary phase, they produce locusts of the swarming type. These locusts are restless and irritable. They begin to wander. They're then joined by others. A great swarm develops and soon millions of them are ready to descend on a region in the form of a plague. What is a cricket? A cricket is an insect that has won a special place in the heart of man. In Italy, North Africa, and Japan, crickets are kept in little cages because the people love to listen to their cheerful notes. The cricket doesn't actually sing. He is a fiddler. A cricket makes its chirping noise by rubbing the ridged underside of one forewing against the surface of the other. Only the males are fiddlers. With this music, they attract the females. Crickets have keen ears which are located on their legs. Their antennae are very long and their legs are powerful for jumping. There are also tree crickets and mole crickets. This means trouble for farmers because the cricket larvae eat the leaves of the bushes, vines and trees on which they hatch. What are bees? A bee is any of various winged, often stinging insects that gather nectar and pollen from flowers and in some species make honey. There are two types of bees, those that live alone and are called solitary and those that live in colonies. Bees that live in colonies are called social bees. There are three kinds. Workers, who are the female bees that don't lay eggs. Drones, who are male and one egg-laying female called the queen. The queen bee is the only member of the colony that lives through the winter. Each spring, she starts a new colony. First, she looks for a home, perhaps a deserted mouse nest. She heaps the soft material of the nest together and hollows out a place under it to serve as a nursery. Then, she visits flowers for pollen and nectar and places a lump of beef bread in the dry hollow she has prepared. She lays some eggs on this lump, covers them with wax and sits over them, keeping the cold air away with her body. Near her, she has a large waxen cell called a honey pot, which she has filled with enough honey to last until her eggs hatch. As soon as her first brood of young have grown big enough to use their wings, they take over most of mother's work. They prepare wax, make the bee bread, and keep the honey pot filled to use as food in the bad weather. During the early part of the season, the only bees born are the workers. Before the summer is over, young queens and males, or drones, will also grow up in the colony. In the fall, the colony breaks up. All that the queen bee does is lay eggs. She may lay more than 1,500 eggs per day and about 250,000 in a season. She lays fertilized eggs that develop into workers or queens, depending on the needs of the colony. The unfertilized eggs develop into drones. Young queens are reared in special cells. Before they emerge, the mother queen and about half the workers swarm off to start a new colony. The first young queen to emerge kills her sister queens in their cells and becomes the new queen mother. Since all the bees who live in a hive together share their food, it is important for them to get all the food that can be found. 
When foraging bees return to the hive, they get other bees from the hive to gather nectar and pollen from good flower sources. They do this by performing dances on the combs of the hive. The bees around the dancers become excited and start to follow behind and imitate her movements. Then, they leave the hive and without the dancing bee to lead them, fly directly to the food source. By their movements, dancing bees tell the other bees where the food is. If the dancer does a round dance, then the food is nearby. On the dancing bees is the odor of the nectar which tells other bees which flowers to look for. A wagging dance means that the food is more than 100 yards away. During this dance, the bee goes in a straight direction for a short run, and this tells the other bees in which direction to look for the food. If the straight run points upward, the feeding place is towards the sun. If it points downward, the feeding place is opposite the sun's position. The speed of the dance tells the distance to the feeding place. If it's done quickly, the feeding place is near. The greater the distance, the slower the dance. In the hive, worker bees regulate the temperature with great exactness. They keep it at 93 degrees Fahrenheit where the young bees are being developed. During the winter, they do not let the colony temperature fall below 45 degrees. Honey is used as fuel by the bees. How is honey made? The whole process of making honey is a way of storing up food for the bee colony. The first thing a bee does is visit flowers and drink the nectar. It carries the nectar home in a honey sack. While there, the sugars in the nectar undergo a chemical change. Water is removed from the nectar through evaporation. This takes place because of the heat of the hive and by ventilation. Honey has so much water removed that it will keep almost forever. When bees cannot obtain nectar, they collect sweet liquids excreted by other bugs or secretions from other plants. Honey contains two sugars, levulose and dextrose. It also contains small amounts of canned sugar, maltose, dextrins, minerals, numerous enzymes, vitamins, proteins, and acids. Honey differs in flavor and color depending on the source of the nectar. What is a sting? Some bees sting. At the rear of the abdomen is the sting and other organs that surround it. The sting is an egg-laying apparatus and actually, part of its job is to deposit eggs. The spear-like sting is made up of three pieces which surround a canal. Connected to the base of the sting are two poison sacs with sensitive finger-like projections. These tell the bee when her abdomen is in contact with the object she wishes to sting. In the act of stinging, the spear-like sting is pushed outward and the poison sacs force the poison into the wound. It is this poison that is harmful to some people. Once the bee has inserted the barbed sting into the skin, it can't be pulled out easily. When the bee flies away, her sting and its attached organs are pulled from her body and she dies. Tell me about the wasp. Wasps belong to the same family as bees and ants. Social wasps, which include the hornets and the yellow jackets, live in colonies like those of the bees. Each year, almost the whole colony is wiped out by the cold of winter. Wasps make their houses of a sort of paper which they manufacture by chewing up wooden plant fibers. The hornets and yellow jackets cover the cells of their houses with wrappings of paper. Young wasps are very particular about their diets. They will eat only spiders, some beetles, flies, and many of them will eat nothing but living food. The females travel long distances to find the right insect. They seize it with powerful jaws and paralyze the insect with poison-laden stings. This keeps the meat fresh until the young wasp is ready to eat it. All wasps look somewhat alike. They have four transparent wings and three pairs of legs. The females always have long, slender, stinging organs attached to the lower parts of their bodies. Their mouths are fashioned for chewing and for sucking. They live on the juices of fruits and the bodies of other insects. Ants are any of the usually wingless species that live in complex and organized colonies. There are thousands of different species of ant and they all belong to the same order as bees and wasps. Each colony has males, females or queens, and workers. The males and queens of most species of ants have wings, but the workers are wingless. 
A pair of long feelers or antenna wave from the head. They serve as feelers and organs of smell. The antenna also help the ant communicate with other ants. The head of the ant also contains the brain, a pair of compound eyes, a powerful set of jaws, and a mouth. In addition to the compound eyes, ants have other seeing organs called simple eyes. To mate, the females of a colony fly high in the air and the males follow them. After this mating flight, the males die. Each female or queen goes off and starts a new colony. She digs a nest and lays eggs. After the eggs hatch into little legless grubs, the queen helps each spin a cocoon. When young ants have grown, the queen cracks open one end of the cocoon and pulls the ant out of its shell. These newborn worker ants begin their life of devotion to their mother and to the rest of the colony. Ants may be as small as 1 16th of an inch or as long as 2 inches. The army ant eats living things. The driver ant of Africa travels in armies of millions, killing and eating everything in their way. Legionary ants of the Americas travel in lines of thousands. In Mexico, people move out of their houses when they come. The ants eat all the roaches, rats, mice, and lizards in the house. Then the people move back to clean homes. The Amazon ants own slaves. They raid other colonies and take the cocoons and larvae. When these new ants come out of their cocoons, they will work in the Amazon colony, just like slaves. The harvester ant gathers seed from grass. Some ants grow fungi. To feed the fungi, the ants make a paste, so they actually grow food for their food. One kind of ant maintains living storehouses of food. As the worker ants bring in nectar from flowers, special ants in the colony eat it. During the winter, other ants come to them and take it from their mouths. Ants may live in colonies of several thousands or in colonies with as few as 12 members. Their homes may be underground, in wood, in a mound, or in an acorn. A wide range of subjects are available in this series now. Let's look at some of the questions that are covered in the Tell Me Why programs. Weather. A tornado is a special kind of cyclone. It arises when conditions that cause ordinary thunderstorms are unusually violent. There is an updraft of air. There are winds blowing in... Flowers. A flower has a fragrance when certain essential oils are found in the petals. These oils are produced by the plant as part of its growing process. Space. Distances to the stars are so great that a unit for measuring distances was worked out. It's called a light year, and it is the distance that light travels in one year. Water. Water is a simple compound of two gases. Hydrogen, a very light gas, and oxygen, a heavier active gas. When hydrogen is burned in oxygen, water is formed. Gems. When minerals are better, rarer, clearer, or more crystalline than others, they are called gems. Gems are the most prized and famous of all minerals. Diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and sapphires stand out as the true gems. Ask for the additional volumes by subject from your dealer. They're available now.